Okay, hey everyone, it's Annie. Welcome back to a new video. I get a lot of questions about my e-reader. Here she is. Aww. People always ask for like pros and cons or like what kind of e-reader it is, what my experience has been. So that is what this video is going to be. For starters and context, I got this e-reader maybe like a year ago, maybe more than a year ago or maybe like just about. No, it was a year ago. I bought this as like a treat for myself because it was like such a terrible, terrible school week where it was just so busy and I was like, dang, like if I'm gonna make it through this week, like I was actually fighting for my life. I need to like have something to look forward to like a material goal and just context for me as a reader is that i almost exclusively do all of my reading on my e-reader i barely read physical books and the reason for that is because i don't buy physical books and the reason for that is because i don't have money it's probably my most used device so that is the perspective that i'm coming from um not a tech perspective i'm literally just a lowly college undergrad student sorry my knees are up i'm <laughs> I just want it to be comfortable. And then what else? Oh yeah. And this is the Kobo Clara HD. I think I'm gonna try to split this video up into two parts. The first part is gonna be talking about the pros and cons of having an e-reader period. And then the second part is going to be why I got this one specifically. I just made a list on my phone of like pros and cons. And also one more thing for context is that before I got this e-reader, I would read on my iPad. For me, when I bought this e-reader, like I weighed the pros and cons of just staying on my iPad versus going on my e-reader also versus like like just reading on your phone. So yeah, here's the list that I came up with. First pro that I have here is that you can eat while you read. That is honestly probably such, it's such a big pro for me. Also, the lighting is going to change a lot. I feel like with physical books, you need to like do something, like maneuver your elbow or something so you can read. Reading on your e-reader, that's it. All you do is flip this open and you just put it in front of you and it just stays open. Like that is the main pro is that you don't have to hold the book open so you can like eat while you read. And I read exclusively when I eat my meals. I don't know if that's like a shared experience. That's why e-reading, it's the move for me. Okay, next, it can fit in my jacket pocket and fit into my backpack. Okay, this one is also a good game changer because it's so small, like you can't really fit like a book. Like rarely can you fit like just a normal size book in like your pocket of your jacket or something. This is the iPhone 8 Plus. Like it's almost the same size. She's just thicker because think about how easy it is to just pull out your phone and go on your phone when you're waiting for like the buzz or something if you have this in your pocket like the same way that you have your phone in your pocket like you can always just pull it out and just like read it while you're waiting for something which is what i do i like read exclusively while i wait for the buzz and like while i eat my meals next i can beat it to death and it still won't die i have a hard time taking care of my things especially my tech things i don't know it's probably because i'm the youngest child in my family and this is like very durable it's like ugh, i'm not a tech person it's like plastic so that's why it won't like shatter or like break or anything like really really super durable i've definitely like just like thrown this off a cliff before and it's like survived oh it's not waterproof even though i've gotten it wet before by accident oh uh, anyway yeah okay next i can hold it in one hand this is honestly kind of a game changer for me this is like one of the main reasons why i switched from my ipad because my ipad was like pretty big and i couldn't hold it in one hand comfortably but, and i need to eat well you know what i mean keep in mind though the fact that i have really really big hands like above average you know what i mean so my hand is super super big like this is my hand compared to my iphone 8 plus like i have a, it just looks like a normal phone in my hand right have, it's also really light that's another thing like my ipad was pretty heavy next it feels like you're making more progress because of the progress bar okay this one is actually a game changer that is actually a game changer that i didn't realize i go through ebooks so much easier and quicker than physical books and the reason for that is like if you look at the bottom here you see the stripe across the bottom that's a progress bar so right now i'm like just over halfway which is why it's like just over halfway across the screen the equivalent of like when you're reading a book and you can see like how far you are in the book except when you are on this it feels like you're reading a lot more because look at how wide this is so every progress you make is going to project to be like more progress than it actually is because the 100% width is wider than it would be as a book because as a book I feel like the width will be like that much or something you know what I mean and so every page feels so grueling because like it feels like you're not making any visible progress but since this thing is so wide even if you just go like two pages like there's like noticeable change in here and that's like soups motivating when you're trying to read I feel like it honestly makes such a difference I read so much quicker on here because think about how thin each page is in like an actual book like do you know how many pages you have to read to like get a noticeable difference i can read in the dark without having to get out of my bed to turn off the light and navigate tricky shadow angle situations oh my gosh okay well first of all this has back glow wait what is it backlighting like the screen can light up so you can read in the dark which is a game changer i always read in the car um and i always thought that i don't know why all our parents taught us that it was illegal to turn your light on in the car and navigating tricky shadow angle situations this is honestly probably my main pet peeve when it comes to like reading physical books in the dark with like one like nightlight or light source wherever the light is it casts a shadow so you have to always like 
maneuver your book so that like the page doesn't cast a shadow onto itself. You know exactly what I'm talking about. That doesn't happen with this. It's beautiful. Okay, next, you don't have to move boxes of heavy books if you're moving less clutter, which is honestly a really big reason why I don't buy physical books because I live in a student house. This, what you see right here is literally all I have. Like this is all the space that I have. There's no way that I could fit all the books that I have on my e-reader in my room. It's just so easy. I have so many books on here and you can like change books whenever you want. Okay, this is probably one of the main things that I love about e-reading, which is that you can highlight and then see all your highlights compiled in one spot. I feel like this is like the equivalent of annotating if people like want to highlight specific sections of their book. So when you flip through, you can go back to them. Except you don't need anything besides your e-reader to highlight. Okay, I'm gonna highlight just a random section, but you just hold it and then you can highlight like that. And then whatever you highlight, saves. You can click on all your annotations here and then everything that you highlighted be compiled into one document. And this is helpful for me because I book journal. My book journaling is just copying down everything that I highlighted into one notebook. And it's so much easier to just go onto that annotations tab and just go through the list and copy down everything rather than have to go search through it. Oh my God, searching definitions. Okay, this is honestly not something that I use too, too often. If you ever do need to like search of a word, there is a built-in dictionary in here. You just highlight it and and then the dictionary thing pops up. Okay, next, a big pro is that it's inconspicuous. This, sometimes I wonder if I'm like on the bus or something and I'm reading from this, if people think that I just have like the biggest phone on the planet, but I like the fact that it doesn't look like a book that I'm reading because I feel like that's super conspicuous unless you want to be conspicuous, which is totally fine too. But for me, like I want no one to ask me any questions or like, you know, like know that I'm reading a book. Okay, next, I think a big pro for a lot of people is that I guess it doesn't hurt your eyes. The difference between like reading on like an iPad screen or like your phone and reading on on this is that this doesn't have any led like backlighting it's not like a it's not like an led screen and i think that that's probably a big pro for a lot of people um because they either get headaches or like because they're worried about their eye health except for me personally i have 20 20 vision and my eyesight is not deteriorating anytime soon like i've tried i've never had a problem with my eyesight reading from these devices so that's not a main reason why i got it i personally don't feel the effects of this that much but maybe me in 20 years will be thanking me is what i wrote so okay next if something has an ugly cover i don't have to look at it Oh, such a game changer. I don't have this issue too, too, too often because a lot of the books that I read are like mainstream published. Um, and so the covers are pretty beautiful for the most part. Point eight, just look at that. Um, but I know that this is an issue that I've encountered before and a lot of other people, depending on what you like to read. I'm looking at like those like romance books that have like shirtless men or like real people on the cover. Why you have to do that to us? I don't know why they do that still because that's like hurting your marketing. Anyway, if you don't want people to see the cover of the book that you're reading or just know what book you're reading in general, um, literally no one will know. No one has to know. Okay, next, adjustable font size and dyslexia accessible font. So yeah, I really like the fact that on any e-reader, like on my iPad, iPhone, whatever, you can adjust the font size and I think that's so helpful. Uh, I have 2020 20 vision. I've like really never had a problem with having to see, but sometimes I like adjusting it to like, to get like the, the length of sentences that I want to like go across the page before it goes to the next line. Okay, and then next, battery life. Battery life on this thing is so freaking good. I think that's honestly, maybe because my old iPad was also really old, that the battery life was like hanging for dear life that I never want to like run out of battery when I want to read. I won't say never, it does run out of battery that I have to charge it from time to time, but like that's like super from time to time. Maybe like every two weeks or so, or like maybe every week or so, but that's like coming from me who like reads a lot. Okay, those are the pros. I'm sure there's more that I just couldn't think of, but let me move into the cons. It's slow and typing can be janky. Probably like the main con of this is because it's not like not like a tablet. It literally looks like a real page. If you like, I can't, I don't know if you can tell through the screen. If you look at it, it literally looks like the real page of a book, like the sheen and everything. Um, and the reason for that is because it's not an LED screen, which means that it's not gonna be as reactive to touch and things like that. Like just sensitivity and speed is slow you can tell like if i try to type it's honestly not as bad as i thought that it would be but it's definitely not like a normal screen you know what i mean and so because of that it can get kind of janky this device is good for one thing and it's reading um for some reason it has a hard time connecting to wi-fi but i don't use wi-fi so that is okay the dictionary doesn't need wi-fi it's like a built-in dictionary okay a next con is that there's no color so you'll notice that like all the covers and everything are black and white um which honestly this kind of bothers me i wish that they just had color on it i mean i guess i understand because it's like an e-ink screen but man like oh, it'd be so nice if there was color if there was an area that came out that had color on it like i don't know i kind of would invest in it oh and maps so like in a lot of like fantasy books, sometimes they'll have like those maps that spread across two pages right at the beginning of the book. You can't really read them on here. I don't mind because I don't really read those anyway. Okay, and then this one, you can't flip through pages quickly. So when you have a book, being able to do this, 
You really can't do that. Oh, yeah, the equivalent of doing that would be going onto this function and then flipping through all the pages like that. But it's definitely not the same thing and it's definitely a lot more inconvenient. Okay, next, the bezels are small, so holding onto it can get hard, especially when I'm nodding away. The bezels on this are like, kind of small. When I'm like reading like this during the nighttime, which is all the time, and I'm falling asleep, my finger will slip and I'll accidentally turn the page or highlight random words or like other random things like that. That's the last comp I could think of. Of course, there's probably gonna be more. Those are all the ones that I have right now. Okay, next, let me briefly explain why. I chose this Kobo instead of a Kindle. The main reason for me is actually that I live in Canada. So this can access Libby, which is that app that lets you borrow books from the library. I live in Canada, so the only way to access that is through Kobo. It doesn't work on a Kindle. So that's the main reason. But actually, it actually doesn't make a much of a difference for me because I don't even go on Libby that much anyway. The other main pro, it doesn't have ads as screensavers, which Kindle does. You can pay extra to like get them removed. I think it's just like $20 extra, but like you don't need to do that on the Kobo. The screensaver that I'm talking about is like when it's asleep, it's showing like the, the cover of the book. Kobo just does this automatically but on kindle since part of amazon they have like ads and stuff on here but kobo there's no ads oh and then progress bar like i said that was like the main reason i think i think i saw that the kindle doesn't have this little progress bar at the bottom the progress bar thing hold on the progress bar is such a game changer next is that you can transfer any file type okay not that i'm supporting book piracy but i'm kind of supporting book piracy but if you have like book files like ebook files that you want to transfer onto your e-reader kobo is a lot easier to do that than kindle because i think kindle only supports like a specific kind of file that's like specific to kindle like a key pub or something i think is what i read but this supports any file like EPUB, MOBI, PDF, anything like that. It's so, it's so easy to just like transfer files. Cons is that there's no cute colors. Like, oh, wait, should I show this naked? I haven't taken this out of the case. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so crusty. Okay, this is what mine looks like, by the way. Yeah, it's just black. It's black like this. I like the black, but the Kindles do have really cute colors. Like, oh, the sage green is so pretty. Um, There's no x-ray function. Kindle has this. Also, I think just Amazon has this because it has on an Amazon Prime too. I don't know how they did this, but like if you're reading a book on the Kindle, they have an x-ray function where it will like tell you all the character names and like descriptions of the characters and stuff. It's really cool actually. It's, so it doesn't have that. Uh, anyway, those are all the cons and pros that I thought of for Kobo versus Kindle. I hope that this was helpful. I didn't really talk about like the obvious pros and cons as in the fact that like, buying this is like way more expensive than like buying any one book but i feel like all that stuff people have said before but these are just pros and cons that i found very specific to my experience i feel like i don't have the same reading habits as everyone else but yeah oh people have also asked if i could do like an organization kobo tour video it would be not helpful at all I, there's nothing it's giving nothing girl i would have nothing to say in that video i literally do nothing on this except for read i don't really spend time organizing it or anything like that um anyway that's all for me thank you so much for watching be sure to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell to be notified every time that i upload and i'll see you all in the next one goodbye